Hello, hello. It has been a time, my friends, since we last dove into damn T-Words code. Is my recording working? OBS is trolling me lately. Anyways, so let's close all this shit that I had open. And today I want to talk with you guys about how big do you want this? I don't know. Um, that's big ass. I have like a huge screen here, so I don't know. Um, okay, so today I want to talk with you guys about server-side chat commands. Um, the old way. Uh, I was uh, thinking about making this episode for a while and T-World 0.7 with the codebase that we are currently looking at um, has somewhat support for like chat commands and also sending the auto-completion to the client and DDRS network has a, a fully elaborated um, command uh, system that's similar to the recon commands. So if you remember the recon command episode where we had like support for arguments <coughs> um, with num arguments and like uh, like these. Uh, wait, let me just um, what? Yeah, you didn't see that. Uh, which file was it? Uh, this one. Um, broadcast. Okay, so these commands where you have like support for uh, p result get string and then you get the argument that's passed to the uh, to the command, and there's a chat chat command system for that in the DRS network, but um, I want to show you the old school way, which is actually not very T-ish, since it's not related to the t words code at all. Um, so it's more for like uh, beginner programmers who don't know uh, stuff and this code can be applied in every C++ code base and the reason why I want to start with that maybe I should definitely cover the other code um, code styles for like or code architectures for chat command systems in a future video and the reason why I'm doing that is because it's um, since it's not depending on an existing uh, system, it's uh, very portable. For example, I use this old school way in the client. Like a chat command system in the client doesn't make a lot of sense at first uh, glance, but um, if you think about it, there are some uh, client side bots. For example, I was working on a stats bot. So you could go into the TWS chat and do like uh, exclamation mark stats. I don't know if you can read something on my bigger screen. And then some uh, other client would read that uh, chat message as a command and then uh, work with that. So in case you want to do something like that, um, you can use the command system for that. But we are going to implement it in the server side uh, where it actually originally belongs, let's say. Uh, okay, so let's get right into it. Um, I already have the correct file open, which is gamecontext.cpp, located in game server game context. Uh, so let's recap. It's uh, control P and you type in game context if you are in Visual Studio. Um, bam, you're in there. And we are interested in a special uh, function here. Uh, it's called on message. So this uh, function is, I'm always stopping a bit because I'm thinking about should I call it method since it's like on a class, but whatever, I'm going to use uh, method and function interchangeable here. Um, so let's call it function, uh, whatever. Um, so this function on message is called every time um, the client sends some data or a client sends some data to the server. We have this all over the code base actually. So if we search for it, um, especially in the client components, we have these hooks. Um, they get all the server messages in there. So it's a, a common uh, function, but we are interested in the one in the game context since um, that's, as I told you, a pretty uh, generic place to edit uh, for your server modifications. <coughs> okay, so all the messages arrive here. And um, we are interested in a specific message type. So message not being like chat message, but like network message, so to say. So there's also stuff arriving as like calling votes. And where's the next one? Uh, voting, 
like starting a vote versus like actually voting and uh, then uh, changing the team and stuff like that uh, stuff like that like uh, self-killing sending emoticons okay cool so but the first type if we scroll up to on message um, here it says if message ID equals net message type um, CL underscore say uh, I presume CL stands for client so if the client uh, sends the network message of type say that's a chat message then we execute this code and we can see here in the first line we have spam protection so if the person sent a uh, message in like uh, in like a few seconds ago I don't know how like when is that about one second ago then it will be ignored something like that yeah uh, and then we do all the message stuff supporting Unicode and so on <clears throat> okay so we want to put our code um, below the spam protection um, or maybe not if we want to allow spamming um, yeah let's put it at top so you are allowed to spam commands but not chat messages put it below here because we, well we can also move this up I don't know it's probably more confusing because we need um, to cast the raw message well we get some generic um, unpacker thing in here that will be like unpacked to some raw message and depending on what type of message it is we have to like cast it like casting is like converting a data type so this is some generic message and we want to uh, fit it and squeeze it into the data type of the same message and that's happening here so we need that step first before we can use it and then as we can see if we scroll down here this is where the actual message gets like sent to all the clients um, it's uh, another function call it's called send chat it takes like the client wait what is it I don't know the parameters the person who sent the message the mode that sent it in the recipient and then the message itself so that's super interesting as we can see the um, p message data type holds a variable um, m underscore p message um, so that's super interesting we can copy that directly because that's the actual uh, chat message as a string so it's a pointer to a character um, which is the first character of the string um, which is basically the same as all these uh, buffers we defined like do you remember the uh, both thingy uh, which is a string I don't know if I ever said it but a string is like a text uh, okay so now I said it um, so a character is like a single letter and multiple characters in an array become text um, and arrays are prefixed with an A because it's array and you also have pointers so something like this P buff and they are very similar since an array is very similar to pointers and um, strings in C++ can be represented by a pointer pointing to the first character in, in the string and then it goes uh, down the memory lane and um, checks character by character and if it finds a null byte like a null terminating thingy something like that uh, then it knows that the string ends so it only needs to start and the content of the string then holds the end if that makes any sense um, okay nice totally confusing everybody at the beginning of the episode before writing a single line of code I love it so this P message um, holds a member um, that's why it's M underscore and it's of type pointer that's why you have a P here and what's in there it's a message um, so this is uh, essentially a um, character array well it's not but it's like a string it's a pointer to the first character but you can three to uh, handle it <laughs> don't let me pronounce my bad English like an uh, array okay so cool and since we can handle it like an array we can access um, elements out of it so if we put square brackets at the end of an array 
we can look into um, what's inside the array. So we can provide an index here, so zero being the first index. Um, maybe let me illustrate this quickly. So if we do char a buff um, 16 here, and then we put a string in there, a buff um, foo size of a buff. So what line 808 this one does is it puts the string foo inside the variable a buff. And then if we do a buff and index zero, this will hold the character f because it's the first one and we start counting from zero. Does that make sense so far? I hope not, let's continue. Um, okay, then we have the index one and then it's the o, right? And at index two, we have the another o and at index three, we have the end of the string, which is represented by, as I said, something that looks like null or um, like this. So it's a zero. Um, yeah, cool. Um, right, let's continue. So if we look at the first character of the message, um, then we can check if it's a command. So we want our command system to be in the classical style of like, let's document it down here, commands look like this. So our example command might be like slash help. So they start with an help, uh, <laughs> with an slash, not with the help. Um, so the first character determining if it's a command. So we want to check if the first character of the message is a slash. So we do a comparison with two equals, and then we compare it to the character not a string, just a character. So single quotes, not double quotes of slash. So then we put the body of our um, if statement. So this code will be executed if the message starts with a slash. So we wrote some code. It's time to test it. Um, so I'd say, Let's use this boy down here for testing and send a message. And also, if we um, detect a chat command, we don't want to send the command to the public chat. We don't want it to be displayed. So for example, let's take this. Oh my gosh, I'm being AFK blocked here. Um, let's take, fuck's sake, that's, um, yeah, that's inconvenient. I also have low FPS due to like uh, recording. Okay, so um, if we send a chat command on this server, for example, slash rank, you can see in the chat there's no message of me typing slash rank, uh, but only the result of the command. And that's what we want as well. So we don't want to show the actual messages. So we want uh, to ignore sending the message when, um, when it's a chat command. And that's where the return keyword comes in. Same as for uh, spam protection. Let me do this real quick. Um, the return keyword aborts the execution of the function here. So if we reach this line, it sees return and then it aborts. So all this code below here won't be executed and thus it won't be sent to all the um, people that I wrote this message. Okay, cool. So let's look at the parameters we have. So the chatter client ID, so we want to um, send a message as the server um, as a response to the command. And the mode being chat all. And what we have is a third argument. The recipient. And as we can see, um, on message also has this parameter client ID. So we have the ID of the person who sent this message to the server. So we use that client ID to only respond to the person who sent the command, not to all. Um, right. And then we say something like the foo or like worked, whatever. Then we go in here and we do like a build real quick. Then we run the server. Okay. Let's see if that even works. Slash the uh, worked. Can you see it? My two words is maybe a bit uh, small or big, however you want to frame it. But as you can see, if I 
type something in the chat, you see my name and my message. If I type something that's leading with a slash, I just see worked. So that's wonderful, isn't it? Um, yeah, I hope that's making some sense so far. So we detect uh, chat commands. And now the next step is to actually look at which command was typed. So we covered that part. Now let's compare if it's actually the string help that's followed. Okay, so here's where our friend string compare comes into play. String comp, and we can also use the no case version, which stands for like no uh, case, like um, casing being like upper or lower case, you know. Um, so we want to ignore the casing, um, which means if we type in slash help, with uh, capital letters, it's also picked up. That's just uh, convenient if people have caps lock on or whatever. Cool. And then string compare no case takes two arguments. Can we see them displayed? Yes. So we have a uh, const char pointer A and a const char pointer B. So those are two strings that we pass in. And then we compare if they are the same and it returns um, a number smaller than zero if the string A is less than string B and zero if they are equal and stuff like that. So it, it also like, it compares the strings as they were like numbers, so to say. So a string can be greater or less than another string. For example, A is less than B because like they, the A is like earlier in the ASCII table than B. Uh, that's a bit crazy we can simply ignore that we are only interested in if they are fully equal or not and that's when this method will return zero so we compare it to zero we could also alternatively uh, write an exclamation point in the beginning here because zero is false and if we flip false to true with the not operator um, that also works Okay, but let's write it explicitly. So if the uh, string compare returns zero, then we want to do something. Okay, and which strings do we put in here? So first of all, the message, and then we want to compare it to the string help. Um, yeah, so the issue here is that we don't type in help, but slash help. So we would have to type in slash help here to compare it. Um, but I'd say it's a bit nicer since we also already checked the slash here to omit the slash here and start the comparison at the second letter. And we can simply do that. If you remember P message being a pointer to the first character in the message string, we can do some memory magic and increment this pointer by one, so we can do p message plus one. So now it points one character further into the string. So um, like in the beginning, p message pointed uh, to the beginning of the string. Now we incremented the pointer. Now it points to the first letter. That's fancy, huh? So now um, they should uh, they should match like the comparison of the string starting from the first, like uh, the second letter uh, with what uh, we wrote here. Um, if you typed in slash help, that should match. Exciting, so give it a try. So we put in this um, send chat if the if statement uh, is uh, executed and we say like um, showing some help. Wonderful, let's give that a try. Uh, whoopsie. Okay, it compiled fine, that's nice. Okay, so now if you type in a invalid chat command, what do we expect to happen? Of course, nothing, because um, we check if it's a chat command starting with a slash. If it's help, we print something. If it's not, we return and we don't print anything. So now if everything worked as planned, if I type in slash and some garbage, it should do nothing. It did nothing. That's exciting. Very nice. And now if we do slash help, we see showing some help. 
So our chat command system is slowly becoming uh, functional. Um, well, essentially it's done already. Now we can do uh, else if, and maybe the second command would be command list. And there we can hard code our commands. Uh, this server has the following commands. That's too long. Let's do commands. And then we say we have help and we have command list. Cool. So now if we type in slash help, it's showing some help. If we type in slash command list, it's showing this. And then maybe we want an else case. If someone typed a um, command that is not in our list here, then we notify the user that this is like an invalid command. Um, invalid command C slash command list or something like that. Um, cool, let's give that a test. Wrong client. So if we do like um, help, whoops, we get showing some help. If we do like garbage, it says invalid command C slash command list. And then we can do a slash command list and it shows the commands. So far, so cool. There's one thing that we are missing though, and that is um, arguments. So we only support um, chat commands without arguments so far. If I want to do, for example, a stats command that accepts a player name, I would need an argument. For example, if I want to do slash stats and then children, um, so let's look into that. And how we do that is uh, we type in else if, and now we can do a string compare if we do like stats and then a name. We can't do a string compare of the full message because this part is variable. The user might type in there whatever. So we are only interested in the beginning here. So we do a um, string starts with which returns true or false depend, uh, depending on if it starts or doesn't start with. So it's a bit less complex than the string compare. So we don't need a equals zero here because it's true already if we um, match the, the starting string. So we put our message again here, again starting from offset one and then we say uh, stats. And we also want to pick up the space, so we force um, the stats command to take an argument. So we don't allow slash stats without an argument that's unsupported. So a person has to type in slash stats space and something. Cool. And then we need a buffer here real quick to print a custom message uh, above size of a buff and then we do like showing stats of and then we quote the player name because it's good style. So how do we get only this part now? Same as we did here, we just increment the message pointer to the offset. So um, the p message points to this character. p message plus one, what we did here and here and here, points here. And we want this string. So we need plus two, three, four, five, and also the space. So six, uh, seven, right? So we want to start a character here. I think it's seven, maybe I counted wrong, whatever, let's test it. And then we want to print that formatted message instead of a fixed string. Okay, let's give that a try. So 
So if I do slash stats without an, without an argument, it should be unsupported because we expect a space uh, after it. Invalid command, so far so good. So if we do slash stats and then chill dragon, it says showing stats of chill dragon. And as you can see in the quote, there's still a space after chill dragon. I have no idea why, how it did that. Oh, because I wrote it like that. So I did stats, chill dragon, and the auto completion. Can you see my cursor? Um, added a space. Do you see that? So if we do without a space, we have no space here. Uh, maybe it would be good style, especially due to auto completion, to chop off the um, the spaces at the end. But that's a bit complex. I'm not going to cover that right now. But just keep it in mind that in 0 0.7 it seems like um, it depends the space, which is not the case in 0 0.6. I'm currently on a 0 0.6 client here. Um, this is no advertisement for downgrading, just like um, I have my reasons. So if I do stats children here, oh, it does the same. Okay, never mind. So uh, it's the case everywhere. Uh, so that's one of the like drawbacks of a um, yeah self-written chat command system, so to say. So you have to care about sp uh, spaces because if you use that name now to look it up in a stats database and the stats database has the name without the space at the end, which makes sense, then it won't match. So keep that in mind. Um, but so far, so functional, I would say. Um, so that's a simple chat command system. So we can add uh, stats here and it takes a name. Uh, this, I don't know. Um, yeah, and this this principle of like working with strings, um, the string compare and the starts with and like this pointer offset can be used on the server and the client side and in other projects as well or whatever. So um, yeah, I hope you got something out of this video, but I highly recommend you um, to either look yourself into the chat command systems of the server side or wait for me to build another video covering those if you are planning to uh, build chat commands into either a DDoS network server or even a uh, vanilla t server because as you can see we also have here um, this auto completion and you can send these auto completions from the server side as well if you code it properly. I will do that in some future video. So yeah, that's it for today. Um, let's go.